I organize this conference and we talk about the return of fascism and, and, and all the creeps which are coming up again and again and again. Um, and we talked about science and we talked about uh, uh, the, the, world, the world of the arts, etc., 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 because there is still this question how is it possible that, quote unquote, the highest culture we have had, the world of Beethoven, Bach, Kant, Goethe, name it, and out of this you got what you showed us. How is it possible? And, you know, how is it possible that, that Europe could commit suicide? and genocide on such a level. At the high time, with the best science, we all had planes, etc., etc., etc. In a way, it's done. You know, there's, mm. I mean, we live in the afterwards of mm -hmm. this, um, in a way, a spiritual and moral and and physical self-destruction. So we, we are beyond, we're in the ruins of that. We still ain't, we still are. We can pretend that we're not, but mm -hmm. you know, but we are, so. But why was it never not possible? It was one of Europe's worst conceits that its culture in some way elevated itself morally. Mm -hmm. And the connection between cultivation artistic cultivation on the one hand and moral behavior on the other mm -hmm. is a very fraught connection, just yeah. as the connection between character and art is a very, very fraught connection. But Europe was always guilty of barbarism, always. From the Middle Ages, through the early modern period, through the slave trade, through the genocide of the Albigensians, through the persecution and the extermination of the Jews, to the treatment of Muslims, to the, the, I mean, Europe has no, Europe's moral reputation, its, repu its cultural reputation is certainly deserved, but that is not at all the same as its moral reputation. Yeah, in fact, the, the tension that you draw mm -hmm. attention to, I've always found it easier to make sense of it by just recognizing that this gloppy gray structure inside of our head called the human brain, it evolved under pressures in the African savanna, mm -hmm. not to find truth, the brain didn't evolve to find truth, it didn't evolve to find what's right, the brain evolved to survive. And survival and truth and morality are distinct considerations. And in some sense, it's remarkable where the brain has gotten us, like you say, Beethoven, Bach, mm -hmm. Einstein, Schrodinger, the fact that we can create great works of art, that we can find great insights of science, that's utterly remarkable, but to have expected that very same brain to have a universal moral center that would always behave in a way that was best for the group of humanity, it's an unrealistic and obviously an incorrect assumption. So okay. it's not, to me, particularly surprising that the brain can do horrific things, unfortunately. You see, a, a Western world is as Nietzsche know very well, is the land of sunset, okay? Our destiny is fading out, always, every day of our life. And it's, it is true what Lionel was saying, that uh, Western civilization always brought along with itself bar barbarian, not only uh, with Nazi, uh, always, always. But it's also true that Western, I would say European civilization, if you allowed me, always uh, doubt of itself, always mm -hmm. criticize its foundation. And mm -hmm. m I may be wrong, but I think it's the only culture that does that, yeah, always. Yeah. So Third. culture and massacre always together mm -hmm. along our history, but also crit uh, critic we we've always been able to criticize ourselves, you know, criticize our foundation, look for new foundation for our old values. Yeah? Personally, I don't agree with you on that. I think we are now desperately looking for a secular foundation for transcendent values. But, this, this but is we must be proud of that.